Nvidia have announced their earnings for Q4 and yearly, and as most analysts and pundits predicted, the company is apparently doing great, despite coming out of a mining crash and despite selling their GPUs at absurdly high prices with few takers. Well, as you're about to see, things are not as rosy as they might seem on the surface. What will Nvidia do to improve their growth projections? Will AI really take the company to new highs? And will we see the mythical new AI? a titan being released let's dive in today's video is sponsored by urcdkeys.com if you buy a retail windows 10 key you could spend a hundred dollars or more but if you buy an oem key from urcdkeys.com a windows 10 pro key will cost you only 15 dollars when you use the coupon code c25 the keys work globally and you can even get a free upgrade from microsoft to windows 11 if you wish after you've made your purchase you will find your key in your purchased orders in the urcdk Keys website. Click on Get Keys and copy the key. Then in Windows, click on Start and type Activate and then on Activation Settings. Then click Change Product Key, pasting the key you just purchased and click Next. That's it. Your copy of Windows is now activated. If you want Office 2021 Professional, you can use the same C25 discount code and get it for just $60. URCD Keys is also having a spring sale with some cool affordable mechanical keyboards gaming mice and even chairs. A big thanks to urcdkeys.com for sponsoring today's video. Check the links in the video description to get your cheap OEM Windows keys today. In the results year over year, Nvidia's revenue fell by 21% to $6.05 billion, and included in that was the $1.83 billion from gaming related products and services. Data center was up 11% year over year, but declined 6% from last quarter. For next quarter, Nvidia expects margins to stay high at 66.5%. But when you look at inventory levels, I'm skeptical that Nvidia's prospects are as exciting as the market would tell you. Inventory saw close to 100% growth from January last year to January this year. And at the same time, the company saw a drop in gaming revenue of 46%. Being fabulous amplifies this effect, and Nvidia is now stuck with $5 billion worth of GPUs that it can't sell. And that's only getting worse. And the sales of GPUs are far from the highs of 2021. So in other words, the 46 series came out and that led to a small bump of 16% in revenue from last quarter, but yearly it's a decline of 46%. There's little demand from gamers, a recession is looming so spending is conservative, and even with Nvidia undershipping to the channel, the inventories are very high. I'm not sure if Nvidia can avoid a write-off, but even if they can, how are gaming revenues supposed to grow from here? The company won't have any liquidity problems, that's for sure. They currently have just over $13 billion in cash. But again, where will the growth come from? We'll come back to that. Nvidia's valuation is completely outlandish in my opinion. At the point of making this video, the stock is at $232 US dollars compared to AMD's $78 and Intel's $25. For perspective, just this last October, Nvidia's stock was at $108. It has since more than doubled. How is a company with a revenue growth falling off a cliff and earnings contracting, doing this well in the stock market. Nvidia's crazy valuation is of course riding on the back of the AI hype. Nvidia is currently the most valuable semiconductor company in the world, with a market capitalization of $560 billion. Is there merit to that hype? Here's what Jensen had to say. The accumulation of technology breakthroughs has brought AI to an inflection point. Generative AI's versatility and capability has triggered a sense of urgency at enterprises around the world to develop and deploy AI strategies. Yet, the AI supercomputer infrastructure, model algorithms, data processing and training techniques remained an unsurmountable obstacle for most. <laughs> Jensen Huang is a brilliant marketer, that's for sure. In a recent press release, we see how the company is planning to capitalize on this supposed AI demand. Customers will be able to 
engage each layer of NVIDIA AI, the AI supercomputer, acceleration library software, or pre-trained generative AI models as a cloud service. Using their browser, they will be able to engage an NVIDIA DGX AI supercomputer through the NVIDIA DGX cloud, which is already offered on Oracle Cloud infrastructure with Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platform, and others expected soon. At the AI Platform software layer, they will be able to access NVIDIA AI Enterprise for training and deploying large language models or other AI workloads. And at the AI Model as a Service layer, NVIDIA will offer its Nemo and BioNemo customizable AI models to enterprise customers who want to build proprietary generative AI models and services for their businesses. Further details will be shared at the company's GTC Developer Conference. Speaking with some friends who work with AI language models, what I have realized is that for the vast majority of AI labs, if not all, renting cloud time for training is the only way forward. There will be very few companies that will actually be able to build their own training facilities. In other words, AI companies out there won't be buying GPUs directly from NVIDIA in mass to do training. This is going to be a very different rally than what we saw with crypto. It's not just the GPU costs, it's the infrastructure and maintenance that make it near impossible for labs to build their own AI farms. They might buy a handful of GPUs just to run tests, but when it comes to actually training the models, they will turn to Azure, Google Cloud, etc. NVIDIA will be announcing their own cloud service later this month at GTC. What NVIDIA's narrative implies is that NVIDIA's 2022 results already include massive purchases made by Microsoft and Google. So the sales of GPUs for AI have already happened, and near term, NVIDIA's AI as a service cloud business will have little impact on NVIDIA's revenue. So there aren't enough cloud providers to make this business a constant growth factor and a steady, reliable source of revenue. It will be cyclical, much like with data center. So while some are speculating that the AI boom will lead to a massive increase in sales for NVIDIA, the evidence seems to point to the largest cloud providers already having invested, with little impact to NVIDIA's bottom line. In fact, the company shrank by 21%, and NVIDIA's own cloud will take a long while to turn a profit. So where are those AI sales coming from? Labs won't buy GPUs. Only cloud providers will, but they already have, according to NVIDIA. How is this a sustainable model? So with NVIDIA's current valuation, the company would have to grow at 42% yearly. The company just reported a decline of 21%, yet the market is expecting a 42% growth every year for the next five years. So by 2027, NVIDIA's revenue would be $155 billion, from $27 billion in 2022 to $155 billion in 2027. Does that sound realistic to you? It's complete lunacy, if you ask me. Assuming this year is recoverable, a positive realistic scenario would be for NVIDIA to grow by around 20% yearly, and that's assuming the AI boom does materialize in a significant way. And that's not even taking into account the gloomy global economic outlook. Semiconductors are massively exposed to macroeconomic cycles, and with the Fed tightening the belt, I think even 20% is optimistic. 15% would be more realistic. So while I do think NVIDIA will be a leader in graphics for the next decade, because AMD is basically non-existent at this point, I think once the AI hype dies out, like we saw with crypto, NFTs, etc., and the market wakes up to NVIDIA's financial reality and actually pays attention to what's happening in the gaming sector, I think NVIDIA's stock will fall off a cliff. I could be wrong, but the evidence certainly suggests that. The demand for AI will result in GPU sales, I have no doubt of that, but there's a limit to how much cloud providers will be investing. NVIDIA's own AI cloud might be a winning bet, but it's going to take a long while until it has an impact. The gaming side is spinning its wheels. Gamers aren't buying GPUs because they're excessively priced, while not offering significant gains over last gen, with the exception of the 4090. The 4090 is a high margin product, but it's not enough to carry the company. Gamers seem to be divided into two camps. You have the sedated bulk and the disgruntled enthusiast. The sedated bulk of gamers have the same sort of conditioning as the majority of people in developed economies today, where we live in a materialistic world of drip-feeding new shiny things every year, be it a new iPhone,
iPhone that's really not that different from last year's, a new Tesla car that's really not a great improvement over what you already spent thousands on, and every other year, a new GPU that's really only giving you another 15 or 20 FPS over the one you've already spent a thousand dollars or more in. New shiny things, constantly. Limited edition, so that scarcity creates FOMO. It's real life, gamified. Social media, YouTube, and other platforms are used to promote this notion that these material things will give you self worth and purpose because the vast majority of people live so disconnected from one another, with no family ties, no real meaningful relationships, with toxic ideologies that are driving men and women apart, no incentives to get married or have children, a society that has brainwashed people into feeling that they need material possessions to have self worth and any sense of self esteem is essentially a vehicle for control, and corporations have identified this and are reaping the rewards. So, the sedated bulk of gamers have the same approach to PC hardware. To them, a $1,600 GPU is not shocking in the slightest. It's a goal, it represents purpose. And there's no point in trying to argue with someone like that that they will get better value off of a $600 GPU on the used market and get a similar experience. That reasoning doesn't even enter into the periphery of the sedated bulk, and even if it did, the blinkers they wear would still stop them from seeing the point. On the other side, we have the disgruntled enthusiast, who probably composes the majority of my viewers. These are slowly drifting away from PC hardware. They've been priced out, for the most part, and the ones who can afford the latest shiny thing are not conditioned into thinking there's anything of value in it other than what it's been designed to do, render frames. So the disgruntled enthusiast is not buying the 4090, but also has no interest in buying the lower tier cards from the latest gens. To you guys, I feel that Nvidia has completely discarded you over the last few years. You are the ones who made Nvidia and AMD into what they are today, buying their hardware over the last few decades, tweaking it, overclocking, arguing online over which one is better, evangelizing friends on why option A is better than option B. You are a thing of the past for these corporations. As soon as you stop being profitable, and can no longer be manipulated, then you are ditched. That's how the world works. And I think that's the way things are going with Nvidia, at least near and midterm. The latest Steam hardware survey seems to confirm this with the 4090 outselling every other GPU that's launched recently. I think the most likely scenario at Nvidia, as far as PC gamers are concerned, is they will be trying to min-max the cost equation with TSMC and Samsung in order to be able to release ever more expensive GPUs keep the older gens around for as long as possible and make only those relatively accessible to the average gamer and intensify this notion of the next big shiny thing being something you have to work for. The 4090 Ti or Titan, if they do come out, will cost $2,500 or $3,000. If Nvidia can lower the cost of making GPUs with TSMC, maybe through chiplets, I think they will start releasing new generations every year. That's what I think they are working towards and probably investing R&D in solving that cost problem. Once they do solve it, the PC hardware business will be just like any other sedation engine if it's not like that already. So does that mean Nvidia will release a 4090 Ti or Titan this year? If inventory continues to be a problem, and I don't see how it won't, then I think Nvidia will release a Titan card. Anything under the 4090 just isn't selling. They will still release a 4070 and a 4060, but those will be drip fed into the channel, and they will represent such bad value that I don't think Nvidia can extract that many sales out of them. The 4080 and the 7900s from AMD for that matter have shown that gamers are not interested in the lower tiers considering how terrible of a deal they are. To put things into perspective, both AMD and Nvidia released a new generation of GPUs at the end of last year, yet according to John Petty research, desktop GPU sales decreased by a whopping 24% year over year. It's the biggest decline in GPU sales since 2011. I hope that a move to chiplets by AMD would tip the scales of cost so much in favor of manufacturers that we would see a GPU as powerful as the 7900 XTX being sold for $500, and PC enthusiasts would be buying those in groves by now. Instead, either the move to chiplets didn't result in a massive cost reduction as expected, or AMD and Nvidia are price fixing GPUs at ridiculous prices in order to clear inventory. So if gamers are not falling for it, I think Nvidia will be forced to rely on the high margin GPUs to keep 
selling products to the sedated bulk and over time will be drip feeding the channel with heavily discounted last gen GPUs. I don't think a 1490 Ti makes a lot of sense in that case. I think the 4090 buyer won't be interested. Once the 4090 buyer pool is exhausted, the only way to get them to upgrade is by releasing a Titan. And I suspect that the vast majority of 4090 buyers will happily sell their 4090s and upgrade to the Titan, even if the gains are marginal. That's just the way the sedated bulk operates. Now, Nvidia could risk releasing a 4090 Ti in hopes that the sedated bulk is conditioned to the point where even a tiny increase is enough to get them to spend money, but I doubt that would work. I think the Titan branding is required here. The introduction of new GDDR memory will probably be the catalyst that Nvidia is waiting for. And yes, I know that the Twitter leakers have said that the Titan is cancelled and that instead Nvidia will release a 4090 Ti. Nine times out of ten those leakers have been wrong, so I don't put any stock in that, and neither should you. So to conclude, I believe Nvidia's stock is absurdly overvalued, and I think the company's financials show that the company is a risky investment, with the only possible reward being the AI hype materializing in a rush to buy GPUs, something I don't see happening apart from cyclical investments from cloud providers like Microsoft. Nvidia's AI cloud could be a winner, but it's a long-term project. And as for PC enthusiasts, I think this generation of hardware, both CPUs and GPUs, is a complete skip. It might be the case that Nvidia never quite fixes its inventory problems, and you will have to stay two generations behind, instead of a generation behind. And is that really that bad? I mean, what game out there is so demanding that you need anything more than a 2080 Ti right now? So if you do have some disposable income, now is the time to be upgrading your monitor and your peripherals. Maybe in the next year we'll have something to be excited about when it comes to GPUs. Nvidia will continue to be a market leader, and they have one of the best CEOs of any company in history, but I would stay away from them as far as investing is concerned. And honestly, I would stay away from them as a consumer until they have something of real value to offer. This video was made possible by my awesome patrons. By supporting my channel on Patreon, you will gain access to the Cortex Discord server, where you can talk to me directly and join a welcoming community of tech enthusiasts. If you can't contribute at this time, then give this video a like and share it, as that really helps. Thanks for watching, and until the next one.